Welcome to Monet Cafe. In today's lesson, we will be painting impressionistic butterflies in soft pastel. Oh, you're going to learn a lot. We're going to talk about sketching tips. We're gonna have some underpainting fun, getting creative on watercolor paper, and creating our own do-it-yourself pastel surface. We'll also talk about the pastel application to keep your butterflies light and airy. This is a two-part series, and I think you're going to love it and learn lots. I'd really appreciate it if you would go ahead and like this video, and if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel and hit that bell icon to be notified of future videos. This lesson will have full real-time content over on my Patreon page. For only $5 a month, you can join my Patreon family and also support this channel as well. And real quickly before we get started, here is our subscriber spotlight. Thank you so very much, Susan. I've been trying to paint with beginners videos for months and I was always so disappointed with what I did. This is the first painting I've done that I like and I'm so delighted. So thank you, Tile, for your comment. Keep learning lots and here we go. So I'm very blessed to have so many butterflies in my own backyard because I have a plant called milkweed. So I've gotten to watch so many of them I guess you would say be birthed out of their cocoons and they're actually quite friendly um, when they first come out and I'm able to really examine them closely. I have a little special guest in the studio who is snoring behind me literally while I paint. You can kind of hear him snoring. It's my neighbor's puppy. I'm puppy sitting. I'll be creating these butterfly paintings on a watercolor block. It's made by Arches. You do not have to have this product. I'm just gonna show you my setup and then I'll talk about other surface options for you. What I've done is I've divided it into four sections. The center section there, I know the pencil is very light. It has one inch divisions in the centers and half inch around the perimeters. Because what I'm doing is I'm going to put some tape around it for a nice clean edge. And I recently got this tape. It's from Hippie Crafter. I love the name. And it's called Artist Tape, but it's really like masking tape. Um, these are little half inch uh, rolls. You get two. I think you might get three in each pack. Yeah, I think it's three. And it really works great for making a border. And this tape is residue free. It's also acid free and it's removable or repositionable. And it works really well. Now I'm going to put mine in my limb tape dispenser. I love this tape dispenser. I use it for artist tape and masking tape, and it just makes it so much easier than fiddling with the tape. So here you'll be able to see, I'll speed it up, where I'm putting my um, masking tape border around, again, a half inch all the way around the edges and one inch in the middle because I'm gonna be cutting each one of these, and I wanted them all to have that same half inch border all the way around. If it sounds complicated, it's really not. You'll see at the very end how I do that. Um, but I do love those clean edges. Um, so you can use whatever you have. If you already have some watercolor paper and it's smaller, you can just mark it off in a five by seven size or even a soft pastel paper. As long as it's water friendly, I will be applying some water-based mediums to this watercolor paper. My patrons will be receiving a downloadable image of all of the butterflies I used, and these are all from pmp-art.com. For my Patreon version, I actually show a little method that I use where I put a square around elements that might require a little more attention to sketching, and I go into full detail as to why that is so beneficial. But I'll speed it up here so you'll get the general idea. It really would be best to use a light pencil for this, but I'm using charcoal just so you guys can see it better. I know it's a little hard to see. Now, here's the concept. If you isolate your image, such as a butterfly, uh, within a square, you're able to see, or a rectangle, depends on you know how you um, isolate it. It's really just giving it a uh, frame to put around, but you're able to then see the negative spaces along with the positive spaces. What I mean by that is I can see not only the shape of the wing, but I can see in my reference image the shape of the space kind of like to the top um, right of the butterfly. I see it's almost like a diagonal uh, line and a triangle in the top negative space. So it really does help you to um, get that accuracy 
without having to do like a grid method. You know how you have to do a grid, you make a grid on your image and then you make it on your paper. And I find just sometimes isolating and um, framing out elements like this really helps. And this sketch is basically to get the general shape and gesture of the butterfly. Now I'm using a little eraser, a kneaded eraser. Uh, you'd be like, why are you erasing it when you just um, uh, uh, drew it in? But it's because I don't want that charcoal to be so heavy. Butterflies are delicate. One of the things I want to do in this tutorial is help you to create a butterfly that has that gestural delicate feel. I've I've painted butterflies I know in the past that just felt too heavy and too contrived. And we want these to feel like they could fly off the paper. For this first part of painting the butterfly, I'm actually using some watercolor pencils. I remember quite a while ago where I discovered I could literally just paint with some watercolor pencils on my watercolor surface and then wet them to get their color. Now I purposely was trying to keep this very light and um, just kind of playing around with these particular pencils. This is once again, another product from Hippie Crafter. Thank you to them. They um, gifted these to me to be able to do a painting tutorial. And I found that for this particular purpose, now the butterfly is light, so the, the colors I chose did keep it very light, but I realized, you know, I'm gonna be adding pastel to this. So I um, changed my direction a little bit in a minute, you will see. But here I'm actually adding um, a pretty kind of teal and I believe purple color to the center section of the butterfly. I did also decide to use a darker colored uh, watercolor pencil. I believe this is kind of like a dark blue, like a dark teal blue, um, just to sketch in a little bit more around those wings. If you notice, there are some blacker areas or darker areas, especially where I'm working now, um, that kind of go into that little tail of the butterfly. And so I'm just kind of getting some light little sketchy marks in there, which is really just establishing the markings of the butterfly and the general shape. And I'm just using a round watercolor brush. I don't remember the exact name of this one, but it's one that has a pretty good tip on it. But I typically, I don't fuss about brushes, especially when it's going to be an underpainting of sorts like this. Um, once again, this is to get that general anatomy shape and just a beginning of some of the markings of the butterfly. And I will stress that I do think those things are important when we're doing animals or people. Um, there are certain things, if you don't get it right, your painting will start off in the wrong direction. Now, here's where I changed direction. Speaking of direction, I decided to break out my Neo Color 2 Water Soluble Wax Pastels. That's a big old mouthful of a name. They are... They literally look like coloring crayons. I love these, they're so fun, but they explode with color. Now, they're called wax pastels. And yes, they are indeed waxy. Um, and they're called pastels, but they don't feel like pastels. Um, however, they're water friendly. And you can see the texture of this Arches watercolor paper when I put it down. But when you add water to these, they just explode with color. And because I'm on watercolor paper, of course I can use water. Now you're gonna see the difference here between like a watercolor pencil versus these Neo Color 2 water soluble wax pastels. Um, the watercolor pencils, I do love using them. I, I love to uh, use them for an underpainting to sketch things in, to get a little bit of color in um, but often with soft pastel painting we work dark to light we work darker values and we're able to lay lighter values on top so often I want to get some dark established um, and you may be wondering right now how are you going to add pastels to this because this is watercolor paper and well I'm going to show you that trick in just a minute okay so watch how fun this is literally just adding water with my watercolor brush and the color is just so brilliant and fun. And I used a combination. I used kind of some red, I think a red orange and a um, bluish purplish color. I'm even adding a little bit of that color into the butterfly wings. I find that when you isolate elements with color here in one spot and then a different color in another spot, um, the painting doesn't feel connected. So often, I mean, even though that butterfly is yellow, sometimes I'll put a little hint 
of um, of the color, you know, like I'm doing right now. See how all of a sudden that butterfly feels like it's more part of the painting um, rather than something that was just pasted on. All right, so I have my basic underpainting now, and it's time to turn the surface into something that will be able to receive soft pastels. So what is it? It's clear liquid gesso. If you have followed many of my videos, you know this is one of my favorite ways and most affordable ways to make your own homemade soft pastel surface. Yes, pastel surfaces can get very expensive. Um, the sanded surfaces, they literally have a little bit of a grit, a texture like sandpaper to them. Um, they can be very expensive. They're great though because it allows you to ha add multiple layers. One of the most awesome benefits of soft pastels is the layering ability. So what this clear gesso does is add texture to this watercolor paper. Now, regular gesso does not have the little bits of sand in it that clear gesso has. And also, clear gesso is clear. So when this dries, you'll be able to see your underpainting. Regular gesso, because it's white, would totally cover up your work. I had first pulled out a set of Paul Rubens pastels, the bright set that you saw underneath, that I thought I would use. But I, I had a few of these darker pastels that... I had used for a previous painting and I thought these colors would make a nice background for some of the flowers and uh, foliage and greenery that I was seeing in the image. So what you're seeing now as I'm applying these is you can probably see the texture. And I remember when I was first painting with soft pastels, um, this happens on sanded pastel surfaces as well. Like I said, this clear gesso really makes this feel much like a sanded paper and it behaves that way but when I first started I would see all that blank space and all that texture and I thought well surely I'm doing something wrong but you're going to see me blend this in in a minute with a paper towel it's a technique I like to use a lot when I'm making my own um, pastel surface like this with the clear gesso what it does is it's going to really soften that background and it's going to blend in those spaces you're not going to see as much texture now sometimes I love this texture I embrace it I think you can make something that feels even more impressionistic um, all right here we go with the paper towel and look at that see how um, it blends in the color even uh, gets more vibrant as you blend it together um, and a paper towel works great for this uh, I like to turn it I, I blend sections one at a time so I'm not contaminating the color you see I'm kind of working in sections and you might be thinking well look you're covering up all of that underpainting that pretty red well actually no you can still see the influence of that red underneath this is totally different than if I had left that surface white um, can you see those colors interacting and behaving together? I just think it's beautiful. To me, this is part of that painterly, impressionistic look is when you, um, when you make these underpaintings and combine colors in this way. We're not trying to reproduce a photograph. Um, we're trying to create a painting, something that's unique and feels artistic and painterly. Now you're going to see me do something else that you might be thinking, huh? Why is she doing that? You see how I'm adding this blue um, to the yellow that I put down? Um, the yellow still acts as allowing that butterfly's value to be lighter than other elements, but it's too light. If, if you squint your eyes and look at that butterfly, you'll be able to see in the reference image that there are shadows. There are areas that are darker. So what I'm doing now is establishing some of those darks. Now I'm going to start working some on the, the really dark areas of the butterfly. I'm getting a soft pastel. I believe this is the, the dark that I will use a lot, which is the um, eggplant color. I think it might not be yeah, it is. It's the Terry Ludwig eggplant color. You see how it almost looks black, but it's actually a really dark purple. Another thing you want to focus on too is gestural marks. Um, that's probably one of the things that um, I tried real hard to get better at um, as I was advancing with my art career. I used to have tight mark making. Mark making. <laughs> I'm still trying to loosen up. And these things get better the more you paint. So I advise paint often. Don't paint so seriously though. Try to paint little studies and uh, I promise you with every painting you'll learn something. Now I'm really just focusing on the the form of some of these wings. Uh, while I had the butterfly shape in, I am um, getting a bit more accurate with some of the shapes of the wings and some of the marks on the butterfly. So this is where I want to 
um, get things correct, but also keep it very light. Now, what if I had just taken those lines and just made hard, dark marks? The butterfly would have all of a sudden felt very heavy and uh, not as fragile as they do. Now, what I'm getting right now is one of my little blenders. If you've watched my recent videos, I've been using pan pastels a lot. I did not use any pan pastels in this lesson because I've done it in the past three or four videos. Um, but notice this is one of the little blending tools, an applicator for pan pastels. They're, they're very affordable and they make nice little blending tools. Now you could use even a little uh, a Q-tip right here or a little eye makeup applicator if you wanted to blend. You could roll up a paper towel and just use the tip. Um, so, you know, you don't have to have one of these blenders. But notice how I'm softly pulling um, some of that dark, rather than making all of the dark area, uh, it would have been too heavy. I'm using it on the little blender to pull and soften some of that into the butterfly. Now I'm going to speed this up um, just for a, a portion of it, but you're going to see me add some of the markings. I'm going to do it very softly um, using my blender again, and I'll be using a pastel pencil to get some of those like zebra stripes <laughs> that are on the butterfly. But not to worry, I'll be back and uh, have some more commentary for you soon. it's taking shape. I'm starting to feel um, the delicacy of the butterfly. I'm still not wanting to overwork this. So I'm just very lightly suggesting some of the other marks uh, on the butterfly. And what's really fun is when I go in and add some of that um, beautiful blue that's in the uh, tail part of the butterfly. I really feel that's what gave it the color punch. You'll see me do that in a minute. So I'm back to using some colored pencils here. I felt like I wanted to get some gestural strokes um, to kind of suggest uh, movement and um, and just that sketchy feel. All right, here's where I'm adding that blue. This is just a beautiful blue, and I'm just dotting it in the darker color first and then the lighter color on top. I'm adding a little bit of that blue highlight in areas to the back of the body and just suggesting it to some of the wings, even though I didn't really see it there. It kind of connected the butterfly. And now I'm starting to add some of these um, flowers. Okay, one of you flower experts, you can name the flower for me because you guys know I, I, I'm not great at that. 
I always say my mom would be so frustrated with me because she was amazing at um, botany. Is that what you would call it? Naming flowers, horticulture, something like that. And um, she was just amazing in so many ways. So don't me, get me on a tangent of talking about my mama. Um, but anyway, so you can see I am just suggesting things. I am just barely suggesting the shapes of these flowers. They came out in these little um, little areas on the stem. All of them were a lot of stems, not many grasses. So I did like I typically do. I put my darker values down first. I layer the lights on top. Um, and... I am being very interpretive with this, um, really just having fun. But now can you see how that underpainting really makes a statement? Um, I decided to keep that one little area kind of light, almost like there was some sky um, kind of to the uh, upper right area above the butterfly, um, like there was some sky beyond. There was something in the reference image. I don't know what it was. But um, these uh, floral elements... I'm purposely trying not to over detail them because what is the focal point here? It's that beautiful butterfly. And I know he was resting on a stem, um, but I didn't attempt to try to make that stem really apparent he was resting on it. I just kind of let him, he's either about to land on it or, um, or just flying. Um, so don't get all caught up on feeling like you have to copy the reference image. Now you can see a little bit more um, closely some of the marks. I'm using a pastel pencil to get those little gestural antenna and to kind of shape his head a little bit more. A um, little highlight on the head and you can see it's just so suggestive. Um, adding a little bit more purple. Now you can get a little hint now of part two coming. You can see that monarch butterfly. I've got it covered up with some tracing paper. I had finished it and then I decided to go back and add a little bit more color. Sorry for my shaky camera. I had my camera resting on my table. Um, and um, add a little bit more of that purple for some fun. Um, by the way, I'm working flat for filming purposes. I don't advise it for pastel painting. Uh, the dust, it's really better if the dust falls, if you have your painting up on an easel. Uh, I mean, you could do all the watercolor portion flat, um, but it, it's really just for filming. I prefer working with my um, paintings up on an easel as well. So um, I hope this was fun for you learning about painting impressionistic butterflies. There's more to come. Also in the second video, you'll get the reveal of me pulling off the masking tape and also taking this watercolor paper off what's called the watercolor block. The reason it stays nice and flat on, water, on a watercolor block is because the edges are glued so it stays really flat and you'll see me actually taking it off, taking the tape off, um, cutting it, putting it in some nice little mats. And here's a, a sneak peek of what's coming. Give me a like if you like this video, comment on this video. Um, I will have these paintings available in my Etsy shop pretty soon. Um, become a patron if you'd like to get full content or just to support these free videos. I am so thankful to all of you who comment and tell me how much the free lessons mean to you. I pray blessings over your life and your artistic journeys. As always, God bless and happy painting.